understand from you what you make of what's happening in India today. Uh, you, in fact, had the opportunity to work with METI uh, to uh, design the policy that the government is taking forward as far as semiconductors uh, is concerned. 10,000 GPUs, whether that's enough or not, is, is not really the relevant question. But should we be chasing uh, a sovereign model? The, the focus, the, the drive, the relentless investment from the government, I would say is very commendable, both from, like, directly from Ashwini Vaishnavji as well as from people like Rajiv Chandrasekhar and the mm -hmm. current minister. They're being very consistent in the investment message. No inconsistency there. The inconsistency really is in two camps, right? Mm. So without naming names, yeah. there is one camp that consistently says, oh, this large models is not for us. Yeah. Uh, we can't build large models, therefore let's not focus on that, let's yeah. focus on building applications. My view is polar opposite of that. Because, so you're saying go after the large models? Yes, because of two reasons, right? So And they keep um, using the example of ISRO, in a completely incorrect way. Because the example they use is, well, ISRO could launch a Mars mission at 100 the cost of what NASA could do. True, however, ISRO still launched to Mars. They didn't want to go to the treetop. Mm. The expectation that we will just build applications and we don't need to worry about large mm. models is aiming for the treetops. Mm. You can't really have one versus the other. And I'll give you some specific examples without naming the models again, uh, and I'm a big proponent of open source models, but there's some open source models that are not from India, not from the West, they're from China, right? And this is not anything by design, it's just the data they've have have been... You don't have to name them, I think everyone... Everyone knows, knows what it is. <laughs> well, there's a couple of models, so they know, they know yeah. exactly which one this is. But we had these models have an Indian open data set, yeah. and then you're asking a question, and the question was, what are the local authorities in Kashmir mm. doing for agriculture and improving agriculture in Kashmir? Mm. So the model started answering the question. No problem, it's in English. The question was in English, the answer is in English. The documents are in English and Hindi. Mm. That's all the language that is. Yeah. And then it says the local authorities and switches to Mandarin. And as far as the model is concerned, the local authority in Kashmir is China. And it went on in great detail of what they're doing mm. in that part of Kashmir, mm. uh, right? Now, being an Indian government mm. or being an Indian or being anybody who cares about mm. specificity and meaning, do you really want a model that is not trained with the data sets that you approve, mm. is not trained with the same kinds of value systems that you care about, mm. educate your next generation? That's what will end up happening. So the question of do does a country like India need a sovereign model, mm. in my opinion, is a pointless question. Mm. You really, really need multiple models mm. that are not necessarily sovereign. The reason I say that is they need to be heritage models. Mm. And the reason I like the word heritage more than sovereign is sovereignty, in my opinion, and this is highly biased, so take it for what it's worth, is not necessarily an Indian concept. No. Okay? Yeah. Uh, like, you know, the whole notion of uh, Atiti Devo Bhava yeah. or yeah. Uh, Akhanda Bharat or anything like yeah. that. Uh, it, it's really everything is for the world and the world is for everybody. It's really working together and coexisting. But Arun, you know, given where you are from your vantage point now, what do you see as the next big thing as far as Articulate is concerned? I mean, what's the ambition? You're talking about the, the moon and Mars and not the treetops. So what's yes. uh, what's yes. the moonshot moment going yes. to so be? For us, the moonshot moment really is, I mean, we've um, like stated this publicly as well. So it's really not the, the 100 million moment. For us, it's the billion dollar moment for us, really. The reason I say that, and I say that with all humility, which is I am fully aware that the chances of becoming the next big billion dollar plus company is very, very small. However, the ability to do so, the market's existence or the availability to do so, and the time frame in which that is possible is very much in reach. So our mission is to get to us being a billion dollar business not a billion dollar valuation company. Yeah. I'm trying to make yeah, a big yeah, yeah. distinction. It's, a, it, it's an important, uh, important distinction, distinction to make. Yeah. yeah, because anybody today is a it's billion, a billion dollar, dollar valuation. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm talking about a, a legitimate billion dollar business in the next four to five years is really what we are going after. And doing that not from a consumer point of view, but doing that an industrial point of yeah. view in a B2B sense. 
And I'm also fully aware, as I say this, that only maybe less than seven or eight companies in the world have achieved that. But if you're not hoping for that, then why are you in the startup business to begin with? Uh, right? the, uh, and, and that's where I started. This is, this is the, the, the hub, the heart of creative yes, destruction. Absolutely. And that's really what we're going for. And if you look at, okay, what, okay, you can sit there and say that, but what gives you the, even the... Audacity. The yes, audacity, the slightest sense of confidence to do it. Just to give you some numbers, um, last year, we beat our targets by about three times, both on the contract side and on the revenue side. Um, this last quarter, just the first quarter, we pretty much tripled it. Whatever we did all of last year, yeah. just in the first quarter. Yeah. 12 more days to go this quarter, so I will cross my fingers. So when, when, when do you hope to close the quarter? Uh, so we will probably double whatever we like uh, ended up in the last quarter, okay. right? And just in this quarter alone. Give me a ballpark number. <laughs> so, I'm, like, so I'm not in the business of giving numbers before we actually close, but what I can tell you is it's in the high eight figures, okay. right? And uh, just to give you a sense, right? Mm. We are a company 18 months in. Yeah. And uh, we're a software company. We don't sell hardware. We yeah. don't sell yeah. cloud services, yeah. none of that. Yeah. Getting to these kinds of numbers without necessarily just having a consumer business in itself is pretty high. Mm. But the other reason we are able to do that is because the market is ready. Mm. Right? The market is really looking for solutions that can get them value. Mm. I, as much as I would like to claim that we are so smart, it's really around being at the right place at the right time. Yeah. But most importantly, hustling to get things done where other people would not touch it. Yeah. Right, so an example I'll give you is we are in an air-gapped environment, mm -hmm. no internet connection, yeah. inside a semiconductor manufacturer deployed for a year. And they publicly talk about it. Mm. I don't know of any other Gen AI company that actually deploys things like that. And most of them won't because it's a very hard problem yeah. to solve and yeah. it's also a messy problem to solve. Uh. We're not afraid of mess. Well, I, I guess profit is in the messy, hard problems that exactly. you attempt attempt exactly. to solve. And yes. may you may you find many more messy problems to go after. Thank but it's you. been an absolute pleasure, Arun. Thank you very much for sharing your billion-dollar dream with us here <laughs> on you. Voices from the Valley. Thanks we appreciate much. your time and your insights. And we look forward to hearing more about you and the Articulate story. But thanks very much uh, for your time today. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Shereen. Thanks a lot for taking the time. And thanks for the opportunity. Our, our pleasure entirely. Well, with that, it is time for us to wrap up this edition of Voices from the Valley. If you enjoyed this conversation, then do visit us on our pages on social media, on our YouTube channel. From all of us here on the team for now, thanks very much for watching. We'll see you shortly.